Welcome to another wonderful edition um, on this channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff Tahkobidonko. And um, if this is your first time listening to us on the podcast, um, you're welcome. Be sure to subscribe both to our channel and um, on this podcast as well. Be sure to share with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Tell them about the Esports Africa News podcast and then tell them to watch us on YouTube as well. Today, I'm joined by two wonderful gentlemen. Um, the president of the Ghana Esports Association, the person of Chrissy Hayford. Um, Chrissy, you're welcome. Thank you. Great. Um, I'm also joined by Achu Sikanku, who is uh, the team owner for Falcon Squad. Um, Achu, you're welcome. Thank you, Kobe. Great. Um, Hello, Chrissy. Hello, Achu. Great. Um, congratulations on your new appointment as well, Emma. Congrats on your ah, Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, honored, honored to be serving the people. Great. We'll, we'll get into, into that quite shortly. Um, but let's just um, start off with Kwesi, really. Um, over the weekend, there was a competition or a tournament held to select um, rep- representatives for Ghana at the Global Esports Federation tournament in Singapore in December. Just give us a bit of overview, how exactly you feel about the entire thing, and um, given how long you have been involved in the esports industry in Ghana, where you started from and where we are now competing globally. Oh, okay, All right. um, well, I would say that this is not our first chance to compete in, in a global tournament. Um, way back in 2010, we got a chance to do that. Um, we had an issue with visa processing, just that we're given only one person was given visa to travel, and then two people didn't get the visa. So, at the end of the day, by the time the visa was also given, the event was almost over, so we didn't go. Then, 2016, um, Wonder Kid was in France as well to go and compete. Um, under the flag of Ghana as well. So this is not the first time that we've traveled or players have been able to move out of the country to go and play. Um, That has also propelled us in actually um, started our membership into International Esports Federation and the Global Esports Federation was started a long time ago. So it all comes to uh let's say uh, it, it's a good year for us. I mean, the COVID has fulfilled a lot of um, esports engagement and built much more grounded esports um, avenues, both locally and globally. So it is a, a good avenue for us to get. I mean, we joined our with the um, Global Esports Federation accepted us into the federation not long ago. So it's pretty understandable that um, we get to participate in in the tournament. And um, we do in order we can to make sure that uh, the players selected can can participate, um, train before and uh, uh, before they get there. So in, in 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 the in the selection process, I mean, we did we, we needed to um, ideally the there were there were a school of thought to select people, but we knew that if only selection of people, a lot of eyebrows would be would be raised as to people who say that um, we only selected some some people to go and we didn't do qualifiers, so we needed to do the qualifiers. And we did a qualifiers. It was open for anybody to register. It was free for anybody to register. So um, that was it. Um, we didn't charge anyone to. Um, the links were up on our social media right. for anybody to register. So that was it. So um, as it is, uh, it was a good event. It, I mean, from technical wise to. Uh, branding wise, it was it was it was great, and we did all this with no external sponsorship or any other stuff. Right, right. We'll, we'll come back to the event, but let me just go quickly to actually. Um, I just wanted to understand, being a team owner, 
um, it's really sad not having any of your um, players representing. You have one, obviously one of the top FIFA players in the country um, on your team. And um, I'm made to understand that he's a multi-talented gamer. Um, what re really was the reason for not having him compete? Um, and how exactly do you feel not having any of your, your, your players on the um, delegation to Singapore? I think, um, as Chris said, this is a, a win for Ghana, uh, being part of the Global Esports Federation and also getting the chance to go represent the country in the, in, in the competition. I mean, Team Falcon has got talented players. Unfortunately, this particular session, we, the person who was uh, nominated to go and represent us had other family engagements, and it was important. We, we, we believe in the family ethos, and um, it was important for him to, to deal with the family situation. So that's why we don't have a player on it. But all in all, I think it's a win for Ghana. It's a win for their... Esports Association of Ghana, and it's a win for esports in general because it's going to put esports on the on the, in the limelight uh, going forward. And obviously, I'm hoping that you guys will capture all the engagements, all the the whole journey from the the, the qualifiers to the events and thereafter. So hopefully, come next year, we'll have more engagement with esports in the country. Right, great. And uh, how exactly has it been being a, a team manager? Um, over the course of the years, um, what is recruitment like? Do you have scouts? Do you have people who go to tournaments who give you, um, you know, regular updates on who this budding player is? Where exactly do you look for in a player before you recruit them, and what your process is like in recruiting them? Yeah, um, for us, it's been through the tournament. Um, we 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 look out for tournaments in the country for all the journeys of uh, esports and we look out for people who are participating and who are doing well not necessarily people who win but who are participating and doing well and then uh, we we engage them from there one of the challenges that we sort of come across is access to the equipment they use though we've got gaming hubs consistent training is important in the cost of training so the lack of the equipment the, the cost of data uh, amongst others is the challenge but we're building on that. There has been an increase in the number of gaming hubs and also there has been a number of people participating in tournaments. So it's given us more um, more um, cohorts to, to select from. So I'm hoping that in the near future, especially in the, in the coming year, we're going we're gonna to have a lot more people coming out to play tournaments so, so that we, we can select from such cohort. All right. Um, it's great that you highlighted tournaments, um, but I'm, I'm just going to pose this question to Chrissy. You, you can answer when he's done, but um, okay. a lot of people are of the view that um, the tournaments that are happening um, are not enough. Um, but over the past few months, there have been numerous events, so many events that have happened, so many tournaments that have happened. Um, the most recent one in Takrade, but people are still of the view that there aren't enough tournaments for people to participate in. What exactly is your view on it? Do you agree with the assertion or not? <laughs> um, well, well, the tournaments are, well, if they say, um, I don't know from what quarters they are, they, are, they are coming from. Is it from the players? Is it from organizers? Is it from... Um, from what quarters are these people saying that the tournaments are not enough? Well, tournament just doesn't come up. There are cost implications that goes with tournament, every tournament, no matter how small it is. And, and to, to put them together, we'll need people, you need to pay graphic designers to work on the artworks. You need to... Yeah, tournament managers, you pay them their transport, even if they are column train, you pay their transport in and out of the place, food, lunch, water, everything that goes into it. So tournament in itself is not, uh, even if it's free, it's not uh, an easy thing to go by. Logistically, it's a little bit manpower. So um, yes, you say it is not enough, but it is it is it is the beginning stages. It's an emerging space, and as much as we do as much as possible to keep the tournament rolling and in and out, 
it just all boils down to money. If you have money, you could run a tournament that is for, for let's say, uh, a month going. We need leagues. One of tournaments are good, but you will actually probably move into leagues where it's a monthly sustainable um, event. Right. But to talk about that on the gamers side, we also need the gamers to come out. If if right. if we do events and the gamers won't sign up and come up, there's no uh, motivation to really put out an event. Okay. You understand? So it's it's also boils down to them. Um, the game is coming out almost all the time. I have seen it countless times. You register 200 people, 100 people show up. You register 50 people, 25 people show up. It is, um, I would say it's, it's a culture that needs to, people need to transfer or translate from being gamers to becoming pro athletes. And it's, right. it's work. Right. It's a lot of work. Currently, a lot of gamers in Ghana are just casual gamers. They are right. not athletes. They are not practicing. They are not in a team. They are not, they are not responsible to anybody. They can't call themselves a pro gamer. Right. Because the pro gamers response are, are in teams. You talk of Honda Kid, I can tell you his team and his team manager. Okay. You talk of Kalu, I can talk of his team and I talk about his team manager. So people who want, who want to be pros really work hard at it to become that pro level gamer. So it's not just talk, it's work. Okay. And those who are talking that the events are not enough, <laughs> they should look for sponsors for us so that we can have more events. Right, right. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned um, Kalu because you have his, his, his team owner here and the, the team owner is on the score. Yeah. I'm just gonna go, go yeah, it's him. interesting that um, some of us discovered Kalu, so you should know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, because, yeah. if we don't do those tournaments for people yeah. to get... No, it's always... Um, I would say that I will lay on the low side to say that oh. we've done a couple of events before, before, even before Carlo became oh. Carlo that we knew. Yeah. This was all because of the event that we have pushed oh. together from junior to all that. Right. So, oh. I mean, it's, it's 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 exciting to see how his level of, I've seen him, I met him last week, Saturday oh. at the Undefeated, you know, oh. and these are, for me, the way I relate to these gamers, I relate to them as my brothers and they speak to me and we interact. I see their progress and I'm really super excited about Carl because he's one person that is coming from Nanotel. Yeah. You know, he's bringing a yeah. new phase of seriousness into the business and oh. it is what we need because some oh. of the old ones are, Excuse me to say, like a dancing car, you know, they think they've come of age and yeah. we need new kids. Yeah. Mm. And mm. what happened is that if you only have old guys all the time at the top, what is happening mm. that we don't see growth? So, um, I lost you there for a bit, but I'm just going to bring at you in quickly mm. um, to just talk about your assertion as a, um, on, 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 on the fact that the tournaments are not enough. And Chrissy's, um, you know, view that the, the gamers in Ghana are, are just casual gamers and, and you know and he just made yeah, that's true. their few so no, if we talk about the gamers in Ghana obviously they're not people are just laid back playing at home for for me for you to show you're a champion you're good you need to come out and um, and play you know what I mean and play in tournaments to, to win or to participate in terms of the tournaments yeah, it's a growing space. We need to give people the chance to one organize a tournament and two others to come in and participate. It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. You've got to come out and play when we organize a tournament. If you don't come out and play, we cannot get a tournament. Even if it's at a loss, we need to have that energy, that content. We need to create content from the tournament. We need to have that buzz about the tournament. So we need you to come with it. Um, and uh, what exactly? Would you make being a team owner? Um, would you make all the gamers, the current breed of gamers that we have, and how exactly is your culture in in in, in the Falcon Squad 
making sure that they elevate their game and become pro athletes um, like um, Kwesi was mentioning? They need a lot of direction. They need a lot of support. And that's what we're giving them. Um, look, it's going to be a very difficult journey. And uh, people have still not seen the, the opportunities or the potentials in esports. So it's a bit of a, a difficult journey. But we are, we, are, we are in for the long haul. And we're doing that one step at a time each day. Right. Um, let's stray away a bit and come to the general meeting that was held over the weekend. Um, yeah. Congratulations again on your appointment as a Director of Strategic Partnerships. Uh, yeah, thank you. A really fancy title, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. A really fancy title. But, um, Chrissy, I, I mean, wow. in the meeting, you outlined a five-year strategy. Um, I just want you to take us quickly through the progress we have made so far as an um, industry or as an asso association and how that fits into the five-year plan that you outlined in the meeting. Well, um, I would say that um, <laughs> we, we haven't gotten anywhere close. I mean, but what we could confidently say that we've achieved is to be able to bring... Uh, gaming hubs locally together across Ghana. Um, we almost every corner of the of, of Ghana we have a gaming hub uh, who is a member from the north to the eastern to corridor to the Volta corridor to you know Ashanti back to Western to even to Central we have gaming or esports tournament organizers in all these areas that we can call on and we say that this is truly a national organization. That for me is tremendous because um, it's it pivots on the fact that we are not only based in Accra and catering for Accra gamers, but we are catering for every game across the country. We still have few more regions that we need to really activate Esports there, and I'm so much excited for the months that are coming because, apart from the Ashanti, we have the Eastin that is coming, is being planned. We have the Bono East also, which is is, is being planned, um, and mostly is not being planned from from Accra. Is being uh, initiated from the regions itself, so that makes it to tell that. that the people there are excited and our members are really working hard to make sure that every region that uh, we have a rep there, they are really working. As I said, even the Western Region tournament was planned for over four, for two years. We we kept going back and forth, finding which really dates it will work. COVID came and um, finding a place, getting trying to get all the uh, gaming hubs to agree to do the qualifiers, getting a place to do the grand final. It's all, and in the last few months, all came together and were able to do the event. So for me, those are achievements because um, as I always say that the gaming hubs within the communities are pivot points for us to reach a larger group of people who don't have own consoles themselves. You understand? And the, the, so the gaming app is like our cell, cell group meetings where everything works. So we get the information and pass it to them. They also go um, transfer it to the other gamers. And from the junior to MTN Conquest, um, all selection of events, even to the TCL event, all selection of events have dependent on the gaming app. Right. And it is, it's a good way to reach um, a class of gamers who probably don't own a console or who patronize the gaming centers. So for me, that is a really great, great an achievement. And we're still getting signups from gaming hubs to to be members of the esports association. Right. Um, apart from Achu's um, uh, okay. appointment, we appointed a new um, officer for 
standardization of gaming hubs. Right. And now we are going to create the gaming hubs uh, for them to be able to uh, work well because not all gaming hubs are the same. Some centers are higher in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, look and feel as a kind of a um, 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 kind of environment. The, 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 you know, all that goes into make a, let's say, a hotel a five star, oh, and a three star, right. and a two star, that kind of a grading system. So that um, if you have a gaming hub, you aspire to um, 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 high, create a space for gamers where, yes. Right. where the gamers can really come and enjoy and also play. Right. And we want the gaming house to be not a place like the old kind of a kiosk kind of a gaming house. Oh. Right. You know, we want people to think about the gaming house as a technological center where parents can go and leave their children so that they so learn and transform them intellectually and also become talent in in in, in esports, just like how we have football academies, these gaming hubs can become like academies for certain games, you know, and all that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so just to highlight it for those of you who might not know the new appointed um, members, um, there's a new director of marketing and business development, uh, Herbert Henry. Um, the name is, is it Kreku or Krak? Kraku, kindly help me. Kraku. Kraku, okay. And uh, he also doubles as the owner of Play Province. And Play Province yes. have some amazing gamers. Uh, yeah. Some yes. really amazing gamers. Um, I'd like to see a matchup between... Actually, there was a matchup between um, Team Play Province Kalu. and, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, Falcon in the NBA yeah. event. Uh, the final yeah. Kujo. Kujo and uh, LeBron Kujo won. in yeah. the final. Uh, so yeah, that's one up for, 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 for Team Falcon. Team Falcon, and, um, definitely. I'll, I'll come back to the rivalry very soon. Uh, there's yeah. also a director for Gaming Hub's standardization, like uh, Chrissy mentioned, who is in the person of oh. Eric Nanayao Akon. Um, and, yes, um, and he's the CEO for Ace Gaming. He has three centers, one in Kofoja, two, one in Kumasi, and one in, in, in Accra. Right, right. So you see that all our members are just like taking positions to really yeah. work. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have Atu himself, who is the new director for strategic partnerships. Um, let's talk a bit about that since you're already on the call. Um, I just want to have a fair understanding of what your role is and the kind of energy you're bringing on board um, giving giving the new appointment. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for me, it's everything esports through the association, the esports association in Ghana. So, you know, we're going right from grassroots to A class tournament. So, in terms of access to equipment for game hubs at a at low, low rate, um, you know, tournaments, uh, merchandise for tournaments, educational. Uh, links, uh, corporate uh, sponsorship to to tournaments and all that kind of things, whether in Ghana or abroad. Because of my network, I'm gonna try and pull all that across to to the association. I'm hoping that 2022 will be one of the biggest years uh, of esports, where it will become like uh, the talk of the town. We'll, we'll surpass uh, music and, and entertainment. So hopefully, yeah. Right. Right, uh, congratulations to all the newly appointed members. And uh, let's yeah. just delve right back into esports as a, um, a phenomenon in Ghana. Um, Christy, yeah. just quickly before we wrap up, um, you talk about sports, you talk about even music. There's a lot of rivalry, usually, it's healthy and it builds, you know, this kind of anticipation whenever there are matchups. Do you see that happening over the course of the next few years or months? Can you put a timeline to the kind of growth we would have in the esports industry in terms of getting to the point where we have, you know, active rivalry, like when you have Barcelona or you have the El Clasico or you have the London North London Derby or something? 
do you think that it's something that is achievable over the course of the next uh, few months or years? Yes, um, well, esports e or video games or competitive play or video games is propelled by the advent of technology. And um, for us, you know, when you talk about technology, you talk about the software, you talk about the hardware. In the hardware space, our space is ever growing. Um, we just be in the next gen series where we have the PS5 and the 4Ks and the 8K kind of hardware. Even in the in the PC range, we haven't even scratched any surface in that space. So, but when it comes to even the the technology, you talk about the PlayStation software itself. But even uh, um, um, 5G coming will open up new doors for us to be able to compete and compete on a less lagging uh, networks. Um, whether in five years, I think that in five years, Africa should be able to compete fairly. We should be able to have the service around. Um, I know that there are a lot of um, um, technical stuff that is being pushed around to get Africa there. There's so much interest in Africa. So um, in five years, but um, until maybe in 10 to 15 years where we can really see um, um, esports rubbing shoulders with the likes of football, but esports um, viewership always uh, summon that of other bigger sports. Right. And um, finally, as you being a team owner, um, which other team currently is your biggest rival? And um, do you think that rivalry is something that fosters, you know, healthy competition amongst gamers? Yeah, I mean, the rivalry is good, but I can't see any team close by. I mean, all the teams have come through, Team Alpha, Play Province, um, as a given hub, all those kind of teams uh, so far, uh, I don't think they are competitive enough. Even we are not competitive enough. Right. We're not competitive enough. I don't think that stage of heavy rivalry hasn't come yet. We're all scratching the surface, but hopefully in the coming years with top tournaments, with big challenge, with uh, the likes of pre play province, I like the way they're branding. I like the way they are growing. Right. Uh, I think they, they will be one to look out for in the next right. year or two. Right. And um, we'll see. Right. Right. Um, so, I mean, for those of you out there who don't know, some of the biggest rivalries we have so far, even though, um, according to my, my pundits um, today, um, we aren't there yet. Um, you have Guy Kobe and Wonder Kid. You have Kalu in there somewhere. Um, for the female James. gamers, you have Monica and um, Dabby Diamond. Dabby, yeah. Uh, you have Aquafa elsewhere, you know, as a, as an, a, a 2K player. But, uh, mm -hmm. gentlemen, thank you so much for making time. Yeah. You didn't yeah. talk about my team. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, no, no. We, we like to stay in the background. I'm Don't so, worry. so sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, we, we are always at the background. Don't worry. But yeah. we have strong players, I must say. Yeah. We have we have Good, yeah. players just, just that uh, in most of our players are now out of the country. So, Oh. Um, we are recruiting new players, but yeah, yeah. to tell we you the to truth, bring... we, we, we are the only um, um, esports team from, let's say, Ghana that has hosted a, uh, a PUBG team way in, 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 in South Africa and played oh. in, in, in leagues in South Africa. So cool. um, we are cool. not just only based in Ghana, we have teams, I mean, we have team in, in Rocket League, okay. we have team in... Um, in PUBG and we have team in Call of Duty as well. Yeah, that's why I saw you Call of Duty. Right, that's right. I'm Call so of Duty. sorry for, for not mentioning um, Roots. Oh, no. Um, yeah, because, but, but you know, we sometimes... Beat Roots. We beat Roots, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, uh, we just I, I, need to call for a match. Yeah. I know you I, I, come with... And the GVC. Well, and the GVC I'm, I'm hoping, tournament will beat I'm Roots. I'm hoping that, you know, we can have a tournament <laughs> running where it's, you know, it's strictly just teams. Um, you know, yeah. we have teams competing but uh, gentlemen thank you so much for making time 
Um, it's been wonderful chatting with Achusi Kanku, who is um, team owner for the Falcon squad. He's also newly appointed director of strategic partnerships for the Esports Association Ghana. Um, I, was, I also spoke with the president of the Esports Association Ghana, the person of Kwesi Hayford. My, my name is uh, Jephta Kwabidonko. This has been a wonderful session. Join us same time next week and uh, all the best with everything. Keep gaming. Cheers. Thanks, Kobe. Cheers. Bye. Bye.